Several years ago, researchers discovered an Earth-like planet circling a star named Proxima Centauri, close to our Sun. The unidentified planet, Proxima b, is just 4.25 light-years distant from Earth. According to scientists, the planet gets enough radiation to keep its surface temperature at about minus 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Like other red dwarf star planets, Proxima b is rocky and has one side that is always dark. That was the initiative before the James Webb Space Telescope detected mystery lights on Proxima b. This brings us to the big question. Is Proxima b a planet with extraterrestrial life? Stay tuned to find out. Since the discovery, Proxima b is tidally locked to its star, which means that one side is constantly facing Proxima Centauri and the other is permanently dark. It is near its star, with just an 11.2 year rotation. However, red dwarf stars are not as hot as yellow dwarf stars like our Sun. Research has also shown that there is a chance water exists on Proxima b. Also, it has an atmosphere that protects it from intense heat while dispersing heat to its dark side. Avi Loeb of Harvard University and astronomer Laura Kreidberg suggest using NASA's JWST to see if Proxima b can host extraterrestrial life. Loeb argues that if a rocky planet has an atmosphere like Proxima b, it will absorb light from its star and emit it as infrared radiation. The JWST, by the way, is mainly built to study infrared light. It can photograph infrared light on Proxima b's surface, searching for patterns that might indicate whether or not this exoplanet has water or an atmosphere. The suggested strategy might work. However, there are additional aspects to consider. Before we go into that, let's explore what the JWST discovered. This infographic contrasts the orbit of the planet Proxima b with the exact location in the solar system. Proxima Centauri is smaller and colder than the Sun, yet it circles its star far closer than Mercury. Consequently, it is well inside the habitable zone, defined as the presence of liquid water on the planet's surface. As we mentioned earlier, the virtual JWST has been directed on Proxima b, the only verified planet in the Proxima Centauri system, potentially supporting life. Tabor and Loeb calculated artificial lighting as a proportion of solar illumination reflected from the planet's day side. On this scale, 0% implies that the planet's night side is black with no artificial light. 100% signifies that the planet's night side is as brilliant as its day side. The imagined civilization of Proxima b's light is considered to be comparable to LEDs on Earth, which have a unique artificial spectrum. JWST might identify artificial light with 85% accuracy if the artificial night side lighting of Proxima b approaches 5% of the natural day side illumination. JWST's detection confidence increases to 95% if artificial illumination reaches 9%. 5% illumination doesn't seem much because even though Proxima Centauri is 20,000 times fainter than our Sun, that's still a lot of light. In contrast, the artificial lighting on Earth accounts for just 0.001% of the reflected stellar illumination. If Proxima b were home to a civilization as bright as ours, JWST would miss it, so those lights are probably 500 times brighter. Civilization on a tidally sealed planet may need to concentrate on illumination infrastructure and, as Tabor and Loeb propose, may utilize full orbiting mirrors to reflect sunlight onto the planet's night side, which our telescopes can view. The brightness from our planet's night side 
is the clearest indicator that someone lives on Earth from space. Our cities produce light, which is reflected into the cosmos. The issue is that our current generation of telescopes is insufficiently strong to detect lights on faraway planets. However, numerous researchers are already exploring the capabilities of the next generation of telescopes. There are several indicators that extraterrestrial technology exists in another world. For example, the transit of a vast constellation of satellites in the direction we're heading may allow us to see the lights of a faraway globe flicker. A nuclear confrontation may cause atmospheric pollution. While these technological signs might be created by natural phenomena like orbital debris or a comet collision, artificial lighting differs from natural starlight. Tabor and Loeb's analysis shows that future telescopes like the large UV optical infrared surveyor Louvois may be even better than JWST at detecting the lights of a distant civilization. Thomas Beatty of the University of Tucson's Department of Astronomy calculated the data only a few days after they were published. Beatty examined both Louvois and Habitable Exoplanet Observatory, HABEX, to assess their ability to detect city lights on Proxima b and planets orbiting stars. Both Louvois and HABEX are expected to launch in 2035, with missions to catalogue and directly photograph exoplanets. Like Taylor and Loeb, BT used virtual Louvois and HABEX observatories to look at star systems with known planets like Proxima b and potential Earth-type worlds circling G, K and M-class stars. BT also calculated the proportion of the planet's surface that was urbanized. The more urbanized the globe, the brighter its night side. This model's artificial lighting represents the most frequent lights on Earth, high-pressure sodium streetlights reflecting off concrete surfaces with a spectrum different from natural starlight. So the variables are the distance from Earth, the amount of urbanization on the planet, and the star the planet orbits. In each case, the virtual scopes image planets for at least 100 hours to gather enough light flowing through the vacuum to resolve the target. When a planet is closer to Earth, its lights are more visible. However, the parent star also has an impact on visibility. Planets that circle smaller, brighter stars have higher contrast, because their stars are weak enough not to overpower artificial lighting. This is why planets in M red dwarf star systems may have lower degrees of urbanization. The shade of blue in the illustration represents the confidence of detection. One sigma represents around 67% confidence. Three sigmas are close to 99%. Ten sigmas are almost 100%. However, although fainter stars give higher contrast for detecting artificial light, the radius of their habitable zone is relatively narrow. Planets orbit so near the star that if a red dwarf is more than 10% distant, its planets can no longer be distinguished from the star. However, since their brighter parent stars offer a less suitable contrast for the night sides of those planets, such worlds need a more considerable amount of urbanization. A planet with urbanization levels ranging from 0.4 to 3% would have visible city lights up to 10% distance if circling M stars, but planets orbiting G or K stars would need more than 10%. Only planets circling G or K stars have visible city lights beyond 10%, although considerably larger percentages of urbanization are required. The maximum detection range for any meaningful detection is around 30%. The four scopes shown in the illustration are two Louvois versions and two Habex variants. Louvois A has a 15-meter mirror, whereas Louvois B has an 8-meter mirror. Habex is the scope combined with the floating solar shade to filter starlight 
and help in planet discovery. In addition, a group of scientists has suggested developing an interstellar interceptor, a spaceship capable of approaching the next asteroid or comet to enter the solar system. So far, scientists have discovered two objects in our solar system. The cigar-shaped interstellar visitor Oumuamua, found in October 2017, and Comet 21 Borisov, located in August 2019. Oumuamua was found in a hyperbolic orbit traveling through our solar system. Its colors are comparable to those of volatile, rich solar system planets. Yet there is no observable outgassing or activity during its nearest approach to the Sun. Planetesimal pieces like Oumuamua have a little mass but dominate the population of interstellar objects in terms of number. Sending probes to explore interstellar objects will enable scientists to capture more exact photographs of space rock surfaces and possibly sample the gas streaming from comets like 21 Borisov. However, when observatories discover such an interstellar object, there is still time to design, construct, and launch spacecraft to pursue it. Thus, these visitors pass past our star system, carrying most of their secrets with them. To address this issue, the National Aeronautics and Space Administration must develop and deploy an interplanetary interceptor, capable of waiting patiently in orbit far from Earth. We hope you enjoyed watching this video. If yes, we're sure you would like the next video here. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more space videos.